Get my mic on here. Good morning. Welcome to worship here today. Welcome to our online worshipers too. Welcome to everybody who's here today. Happy that we're here to worship our God. Our theme of our service today is Our God Patiently Seeks Fruit. And that obviously is talking about fruits of faith. We here in our, in our readings today and in our, in our hymns today, the, the fruits of faith that, that God wants us to produce and giving us the, the motivation to do those good word, to, to say those good words and to, say those, to do those good actions, uh, to praise God. So let's begin with our opening hymn today, which is on page one. It is, This is the Day the Lord Has Made. We'll sing verses one, two, and three. God bless your worship. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. pray. Almighty God, 
In your bountiful goodness, keep us safe from every evil of body and soul. Make us ready with cheerful hearts to produce fruits of faith through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for our first lesson. First lesson from God's word today is Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Now I, tell you, now I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation of Israel, and the people of Judah are the vines he delighted in. And he looked for justice, but saw bloodshed, for righteousness, but heard cries of distress. This is God's word. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 118, and we'll sing this psalm in unison today.
Our second lesson today is Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 21, also serving as our sermon text today. Not that I have already obtained all this, the Apostle Paul writes, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us, then, who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their glory, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. This is God's word. Today's verse of the day is Hebrews chapter 2, verse 12. Alleluia, I will proclaim your name to my people. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Alleluia. Please stand for the words of the gospel. Today's gospel is Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 43, the parable of the tenants. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect its fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. He sent his son to them. They Lost my spot. (laughs) He sent his son to them. Where is I? There it is. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. This is God's word. Praise be to you, O Christ. 
Please be seated. We will move into um, our hymn of the day today. Um, or do I see some children back there? Is it okay if we do a children's lesson? All right, sounds great. Children, in just a little bit, we are going to have our sermon today. And in our sermon text, we are going to be seeing, or hearing rather, that our citizenship is someplace. Do you know what that word means, citizenship? It means that you belong to someplace. Someone might say, our citizenship is in the United States of America. And yes, that's true. Your citizenship is in the United States of America because you belong to this country. But God's word says that our true citizenship, the, the eternal citizenship, is, is in heaven. Now, if our citizenship, if we focus on our citizenship in the United States, think about your home. Think about the things that you do in your daily life. And if you focus on those only and not on Jesus, not on heaven, guess what? It's going to be very bad for us, for you and for me, if we think about only the things in this earth the things in this country and not think about Jesus. God's word actually says that we would be destroyed if we set our minds on earthly things, if we make our God the things of this earth. But the good news is that you and I have a citizenship in heaven. That Jesus came to this earth from heaven, lived on this earth, perfectly, was sacrificed for us to redeem us from our sin, and then he went back up to heaven, and he will come back again one day to take you who believe in him to heaven, where your citizenship is. You belong in heaven. You're on earth right now, and that's good, but that's where God will take you one day, to heaven. So always keep your focus on heaven. Amen. We'll pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us Jesus to take us to heaven one day. We ask that you would help us to always focus on him and focus on heaven so that we never think about the things of this earth more than than we should, more than than thinking about Jesus. We thank you for, for giving us a certainty of salvation and a home in heaven. Amen. We'll continue with our hymn of the day. It's hymn 203, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our sermon text today is based on Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 21. You're invited, if you're in person with us, to follow along again to those verses in your bulletin. They served as today's second lesson. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. And then we'll be focusing in, uh, especially on verses 17 and following today. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies to be so that they will be like his glorious body. This is God's word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, imagine that you are hiking in Willow River State Park And you get to a point where your feet are so tired that you don't want to take another step. Well, maybe you're you're trying to reach the step counts on your step counter and you realize that you're only at 5,000 steps and you need to get to 10,000. So you tell yourself to keep pressing on. Let's say that you have a project at your place of business or at your, your place of living and you find out that, that the, the deadline for this project that you have is coming up. And you, you, feel, you find that you need to keep pressing on. You have to put in the extra hours to, to keep pressing on. We have some students here today. We have people who have taken different classes before, and maybe you've had an assignment that you have to put in extra hours to, to try to get it done, to, to get the good grade and then you, you realize, ah, i got to keep pressing on. Well, the Apostle Paul tells us today to keep pressing on in our walk with Jesus. He tells us to keep pressing on in our walk with Jesus, which can be difficult at times. That's the challenge. Because Satan rears his ugly head and tries to get us to stumble along our path of walking with Jesus. But God's word comes to our rescue as it usually does. God's word is powerful to give salvation from sin to everyone who believes. Is God's word worth listening to? Absolutely. There's nothing more important to listen to. And God's word tells us today to press on as we forget what is behind us and as we look to what is ahead of us. Have you ever jumped into a mid-conversation or a conversation halfway through it? You haven't heard all of what's said before. Well, that's what it is like with our text for today. We jump into... Paul's words, inspired by God, mid-conversation. The Apostle Paul says, not that I have already obtained all this. What is the all this that he's, that he's talking about? Well, just like as you might walk into a conversation, mid-conversation, and it would be helpful to know what was said before, <laughs> beforehand, so also it's helpful to know what's said beforehand in this text for today. The all this that Paul is talking about 
includes him knowing Christ. Knowing, knowing, a res- knowing a righteousness that comes by faith and not by works, that's one thing. Knowing a righteousness that comes by faith. And another thing that he, he, he wanted was to participate in the sufferings of Christ. Sounds illogical, doesn't it? But for a Christian, with God's word working in us, we want to, be, to become like Christ. We want to, to suffer with Christ because He says to follow him, take up our crosses. And a third thing that Paul wanted to obtain was the resurrection from the dead. Paul had attained righteousness through faith, of course. He was a Christian. He knew that he was right with God. But he hadn't attained all the sufferings of Christ yet. He hadn't experienced all of them nor had he been raised from the dead yet, so he could say, not that I have already obtained all this. Now imagine that you are out there after fellowship or during fellowship today after church, or you are out with somebody in the community, maybe you're with a friend that you know or a family member, and they're telling you about all the goals that they have. And they say, I haven't obtained all of it yet. But I'm able, you know, maybe they're able to still pursue those goals in life that they've mentioned and maybe it's skydiving, maybe it's climbing a mountain. And then you would think that they would continue pressing on, right? Pressing on towards towards those things. Well, that's what the Apostle Paul did. He pressed on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of him. We don't know exactly what that was for which Christ took hold of him. Paul doesn't put a word on that today. But just as Christ takes hold of every Christian to participate in his sufferings and to rise from the dead one day, so also got Christ wanted that for, for Paul. So Paul pressed on towards those things. He pressed on by remembering to forget what was behind. Forgetting what was behind. What was some of the things that were behind Paul? Well, actually, this chapter of Philippians says that he was, he he talked about himself, and he was a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was of the tribe of Israel. He followed God's law faultlessly, he described himself as. He also, he also um, was zealous for the Lord, though his zealousness actually persecuted Christians because he thought that was the thing to do. That was Paul's past. He thought that his works would gain him worth with God. But he said, I'm going to forget that. That is behind me. And I'm going to strain toward what is ahead. Before we look at what is ahead, maybe we should think about what is behind. Do we think about our things that we have done as giving us worth to God? or to others? Or maybe, like the Apostle Paul may have been tempted to do, do we feel guilty for our past mistakes? Do we sit and dwell on our guilt? Sometimes we do. But the good news in God's Word today is that as ones who have been bought by the blood of Christ, we can look ahead and we can forget what is behind. So what are you looking forward to? What are you looking ahead to? Are you looking ahead to watching a football game sometime? Are you looking ahead to eating the, 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 the great meal that you have planned later on today? 
Are you looking forward to getting out and going for a hike? What are you looking forward to? A lot of earthly things. Apostle Paul mentioned those things today too, didn't he? God wants you to to enjoy those things, but, but God doesn't want those things to be our God. That's why the Apostle Paul said that we need to watch out for setting our minds on earthly things. The Apostle Paul said that there are thing, people that, that look ahead to different things. There are some people, he said, with tears, he said that there are some who look ahead, look, look at earthly things. Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is in their shame. You know, this life is short. We may live to 70 or or 80 years if we have the strength, maybe 90, maybe more. But then our life will end. And then there's eternity after that. Maybe we look ahead to some of the things in this life and our focus is more on that than on God That's not looking that far ahead, is it? And God says that destruction comes to us who focus on that first and and foremost than than God. We make those things our God. But the good news for us is that our citizenship is in heaven. It is a guarantee for us. This country, we're living in now, but there's a far better country for us. A country with no sin, a country with no physical ailments, a a country with, with nothing like that but heaven. And heaven is far better than than this country because our bodies will be transformed. The Apostle Paul talks about that in today's text. He says, We eagerly await a Savior from there that is from heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. God's word tells us in a different part of of his word that when Jesus comes on judgment day, the dead in Christ will rise. The dead in Christ, those who have died in faith, will rise. And then we will have resurrected bodies that are much different than what we have now. The Apostle Paul says in another part of God's word that these bodies will be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. The, the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. No more death in this new resurrected body. No more sin in this mind that often leaves us feeling guilty. No more physical ailments either. You get to press on as you look forward to that transformed body that Christ has promised you because of what he has done for you. You get to look forward to that heavenly home where your citizenship lies. And you get to look forward and forget what is behind because Jesus came to this earth to rescue you from your sin. Your gracious God, who sent Jesus, is your very reason to press on in your walk with Jesus. Walking with him is worth more than anything else. So press on. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. On page 8, we confess our Christian faith 
using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At this part of our service, we have the opportunity to fill out a connection card, and you can turn that in at the back of the worship area today. If you do need a connection card, there are some available at the church entrance. Please stand for prayer. Our prayer today, our prayer of the church, will, we, will, we will remember Christ who pressed on for us and ask that we press on as well. We also will pray for persecution that is going on in our world today and ask for God to deliver us. Dear Jesus, our Savior, you were sent from heaven to rescue us. Your work of salvation involved enduring persecution, and you completed your work of salvation. Then you rose to life so that we have a guaranteed citizenship in heaven. This is the best news that encourages us to press on in our walk with you. In China today, Christians experience persecution for their faith. And if it be your good and gracious will, Lord, Please end their persecution so that your word may be spread more easily in China to those who are thirsty for the gospel. Lord, we see that the persecution of Christians is a growing reality even in the United States in which we live. Christianity is shunned by many. Whether your will is to end persecution in China and or the U.S. or to allow it to continue, we ask that you would encourage us to press on with the certainty of heaven in our minds. We ask that you would give all who are suffering that certainty. As we press on in our walk of faith, help us to produce many fruits of faith in word and action to your glory alone. In your name we also pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. So often in life, we need this encouragement of God to keep pressing on day by day. So we will sing our next hymn today, Day by Day.
Please stand. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Our closing hymn today is I'm But a Stranger Here. Reminds us of our true heavenly home.
Thank you for joining us today at Faith, both in person and online. Also, a couple announcements that at 12.15, after we're done um, getting ready from setting down from church and setting up for the meeting, we'll have the voters meeting that we've been talking about. All are welcome to attend this voters meeting, uh, this fourth quarter uh, voters meeting. Also, um, special thank you to you for the special offering from last week for Wells Campus Ministry. That is greatly appreciated to help support Wells Campus Ministry at large. And um, we pray that, that, that those funds would be, would be used to God's glory, and, and we trust that they will be. I believe those are all the announcements that I have today. If there are no other announcements from you, I don't see any, so I'd be happy to greet you at the door, or greet you rather from the back to the front today like we usually do. And then also stick around if you can for fellowship afterwards.